Hello saints and future saints. Uh, you know, we finished up our Hidden Truth Part 5. And today we're going to tackle Part 6 of our 8-part study series called Hidden Truth. You know, in our excitement for the Lord, sometimes we forget that God is a God of order. His design is perfect in all ways. And everything he's given us is laid out without fault we forget that his word is written according to his perfect design teaching us to pay attention to its supernatural order <clears throat> now when we ignore how the Bible is written we try to make the entire Bible apply to us today and causing confusion and questions after questions applying the entire Bible to our lives for today just won't work so because the entire Bible isn't written to us for today and too often people try to read one program into another and they wonder why confusion is the only outcome now mixing two different plans or Gospels only results in misunderstanding God's Word so please understand however I'm not saying to ignore everything but the gospel of grace. That's not what I'm saying here at all. It's important to know that the entire Bible, in order to distinguish the differences between God's programs. Now, just keep in mind that the entire Bible isn't to us for today. Yes, the entire Bible is for us, but not to us in this dispensation of grace. In our last study, Hidden Truth Part 5, we did a quick overview of the Old Testament layout. Just a rough outline. Uh, it wasn't too detailed. We left off at the, at the point where Christ Jesus is presented to the world, but offered exclusively to the Jews. We know how the Jews rejected Jesus as their Messiah and had him crucified on the cross fulfilling the words of many prophets the four Gospels Matthew Mark Luke and John are all about our Lord's earthly ministry to the Jews his foretelling of the second coming and how they rejected him as their king of kings their Messiah now the book of Acts keep in mind the book of Acts is all about the actions the process of converting from one dispensation to another the earthly program to the heavenly program kept a mystery and and given to us by our Apostle Paul we see clearly on in Acts chapter 2 Peter is preaching on the day of Pentecost he's blaming the Jews for killing their Messiah and we also see the Holy Spirit coming upon them them being the Jews that Peter was preaching to now notice I said upon the Holy Spirit came upon them not within or in them this is a, a, an important key to remember as we move along also notice that Peter was preaching the gospel of the kingdom much different than the gospel of grace that comes later through Paul now how do we know that Jesus and the twelve had been preaching the gospel of the kingdom for about three years and Jesus himself told them that he was soon to be killed in Jerusalem and none of them understood what he meant we can see that if we look at uh, Luke chapter 18 verse 34 and they they being the Jews understood none of these things and this saying was hid from them neither knew they the things which were spoken now the very fact that they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about proves they had no knowledge of Paul's gospel the reason why they didn't know is because Paul's gospel the mystery hadn't been revealed yet the 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 12 never preached about the death burial and resurrection Paul's gospel hence Luke 1834 they didn't understand what Jesus was talking about at all okay so as we move along through the transitional book of Acts, the transitioning from one dispensation of the law, of, law to grace, we see in chapter 7 the stoning of Stephen. It's at this point 
that the Jews totally reject the Holy Spirit. Now look here with me at chapter at Acts chapter 7 verse 51 through uh, 60. Ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears, ye do always resist the Holy Ghost as your fathers did, so do ye. Which of the prophets have not your fathers persecuted? And they have slain them, which showed before of the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law by the disposition of angels, and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens opened and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city, and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God, and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. Now the Jews had finally done it total rejection they rejected all three persons of the trinity the father the son and the holy ghost and this action was where god puts aside the dispensation of the kingdom and starts a new dispensation through paul the dispensation of grace putting aside the earthly program and revealing the secret mystery of the heavenly program the gospel of grace through the apostle paul look here at romans chapter 11 verse 13 for I speak to you Gentiles inasmuch as I am the apostles of the Gentiles I magnify I magnify mine office now we are now living in between in parentheses of the old and new covenants belonging to Israel the Jewish nation now there's really no doctrine in the book of Acts to the body of Christ but it gives us a picture of how Paul was saved and how he becomes the apostle to the Gentiles and of course any Jews who would also believe so don't forget Paul got saved under the kingdom dispensation under the law and also that once he was saved he went to the Jews first teaching them from uh, the synagogues now we also see our new creation in 2nd Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new now this being one of the mysteries revealed to Paul by our Lord Jesus Christ we also see where we were first called Christians in Acts 11 verse 26 and when he had found and when he had found him he brought him unto Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch the book of Acts also talks about Paul his three missionary journeys and and documents the events which took place during these trips now after the book of Acts we move into Paul's books Romans through Philemon these 13 books are written to and for the body of Christ that's specifically for us today folks and no one else Romans through Philemon gives us everything we need in this age of grace they also give us our marching orders and explain the intricate details of the mystery given to Paul by our Lord Jesus. This age is called the dispensation of grace, God's dispensing of the grace program to and for the body of Christ, distinguishing between the earthly program and 
our heavenly program. Now, the word gospel simply means good news. Many people believe there's only one gospel, but through right division, we find multiple gospels written all throughout the Bible, and even more gospels are going to follow when the church is raptured. We see that in Revelation chapter 14, verses 6 through 7. And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, and to every nation, and kindred, and tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God, and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment is come, and worship him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. Now that's obviously much different than the gospel of grace we have today. That's because once the church is raptured, God will revert back to the previous dispensation for the Jews. And so the gospel will change accordingly as well. So Paul's books are Romans through Philemon. Now we move over to Hebrews, James, 1st, 2nd uh, Peter, 1st, 2nd, 3rd John, and Jude, and Revelation, which are all about the Jews during Daniel's 70th week, moving into the 1,000 year millennium. One very important thing to consider here, especially if you know people who won't be caught up in the rapture, perhaps you should let them know what to do after the rapture happens because maybe when this event takes place, they'll want some answers. These last books in your Bible, the ones after Philemon, Hebrews through Revelation, these particular books will be essential when this dispensation of grace comes to a close and God reinstates the earthly program, the, king, the kingdom dispensation. Now these books are written especially for, to, and about the Jews heading into Daniel's 70th week. Instructions specifically for the Jews and what's coming for the nation of Israel. This is after the church is caught up unto our Lord Jesus in the rapture. Confusion sets in and it's happening at an alarming rate all throughout Christendom. The saints trying to read these last books as though they're written to us today when they're not. They're trying to add the heavenly program given to Paul into the earthly program given only to the Jews into one big confusing gospel and they're twisting, adding, removing all scripture to get it done. So to the demise of rightly dividing God's word. So two different gospels entirely. And people think it's a contradiction when in fact there's no contradiction at all. People are the ones creating contradiction not God God is a God of order and division keeping things rightly divided at all times knowing this and keeping things in context rightly dividing prevents confusion misunderstanding and much contention we see in the body of Christ today it's all about right division my friends and with right division comes peace comfort joy and security assurance of salvation in fact we'll be seeing in a future study that God divided the Bible into seven different dispensations and understanding how it all works is truly the key to understanding God's Word so this closes our part six of hidden truth part seven should be uploaded in probably a couple days as we're moving along through part eight so with that said grace and peace unto you all in Christ Jesus and I'll see you on the next video